the reason why we chose this the song for, for Teresa is Teresa is always like the wise owl. You know, you go and you're just like a bit clueless about something and she's so patient and she'll sit with you and she will talk you through it and explain it. And if you don't know it, she will explain it again. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate that about you, Teresa. So that's we thought you're going to be the best person to answer these questions. So I've, I've literally taken off our, um, off our website kind of the, f the frequently asked questions that we have. Um, so I'm going to go straight into that with you. And, um, you know, uh, what really differentiates Wealth Migrate in terms of investing in real estate from a real estate investment trust fund. How, di how, did how, how different is that? Okay, um, a trust fund is called a REIT. And what it is, is there's a company that goes out and they buy a lot of commercial opportunities and they put it into one basket. And you then buy a share in that basket of combined properties that they have sourced. Um, the return you get is they try to give you around a 6% return on the money you invested with them. You don't have any control over the properties in their basket. And they might have properties in there that are performing very well and they might have properties in there that are not performing so well. I often drive into a half empty shopping center and then I see a big board managed by a REIT. And then I'm thinking, wow, people are investing in this shopping center. Do they know that it's half empty? So that's a REIT. And that's basically the only way that the average guy can invest in commercial real estate. Because it's very sophisticated. It's very expensive. You have to have loads of experience and lots of money. So that's a REIT. Now, um, Wealth Migrate enables you to create your own basket because you can physically go look at opportunities, single opportunities across several uh, asset classes and even borders, and you can build your own basket one by one, and you can put in your basket the properties that you've researched and that you feel works for you. So that's the difference. The other difference is on a REIT, like I said, they try to give you a 6% return. The, the REIT has already taken all their fees. Whether their basket performs or not, they get paid. Wealth Migrate said, okay, let's cut out most, most of the middlemen. Let's show people that our interests are aligned with theirs. We don't get paid until you've made 7%. So once you've made 7%, wealth migrate shares with you in the upside. So you can see that if we bring you something that's not performing, we're not going to make money either. So I would say that's the main difference between what wealth migrate offers you and a REIT. You explained that really well, thank you. So, so uh, Teresa, on the fee side, um, if I invest a thousand dollars through the wealth migrate platform let's say in one of the medical investments that we have um do you guys take any fees off that does wealth migrate take fees off that yes if you go and look at our brochures that's very important for you that i mean you need to educate yourself so the brochures are there for you to study there's like an initial fee because we employ people to do the due diligence on your behalf and often it takes months to do that proper due diligence before we bring you that opportunity. I think for Medical 7, they did seven months of research. So we need to employ people. They fly overseas. They go and touch the asset. They do research on everything that you can think of. We've got a 150-point due diligence system, which we do for you. So those people need to be paid. So there is a fee up front, we show you exactly how much the fee is. Um, and then after that, once you've bought into it, we say there's like a hedge rate of 7%. So when you make 7%, on the upside, we share with you 50-50. And we uh, share our 50% with 
our partners on the other side. So that's also why we say our partners, their interests are also aligned with yours because they also don't get paid unless you've got an opportunity that performs well. So the important thing there is that if I invest my $1,000, my $1,000 remains $1,000. Yes. The fees are all taken up yes. front way before the investments are actually calculated. And on the brochure, any return you see is the actual return you receive in your wallet. So no fees come off after the returns. It's all calculated in there, and that's the actual money that's paid into your wallet. So what type of real estate investment opportunities does Wealth Migrate offer on the platform? Well, uh, we, we do a lot of research to, to find the best of the best. Life changes, the world changes, nothing stays the same. And you have to be ahead of the trends or at least you do need to do enough research to know that retail at the moment might not be such a good investment because, I mean, we can all see how empty shopping centers are. We all know that people buy off Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. And we all, you can see the results of that. So we need to find the best performing opportunities and that's what our team does. So medical real estate is really a very well performing uh, sector because why? People get ill. Um, <laughs> they go to doctors. There's always, have you ever gone to a doctor's consulting rooms and there's not people waiting? Have you even been to a an hospital and there's nothing happening there? So it's a very um, sector that's, what, what the economy does doesn't affect it. People get ill, they need to go to the doctors. And also the other thing about it is people are growing older. So there's just more and more demand for medical services. So there's demand, there's security because of, of uh, uh, it's something that's used. That's one, one aspect. Residential is always in demand bec in growing countries with growing populations. So that's why we won't bring you residential in a country where there's no population growth because then there's no demand. And if there's no demand, it's not going to grow. But if you find a country that has got um, good protection for landowners, for property owners, where there's demand for property, then you can get involved in residential real estate. We've discovered such an opportunity in America. It's called multifamily. So we do multifamily. It's residential, but in a commercial way. So you can't get onto the plane and fly over to America and go and buy an apartment. You have to buy the whole block because all 200, 300 units in that one block have only one title. In South Africa, it's sectional title. Each unit has its own title. But in America, it's an institutional type of investment. All 300 units have one title. So it's one title with 300 income streams. So effectively, are you investing into all three or 200 of those units? Exactly. So if one is empty, it doesn't affect the income so much, whereas if you have one apartment and you don't have a tenant, you lose 100% of your income. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the past, it's the funds and the REITs that bought, bought the whole multifamily because they were the only people who could afford it. But now you can invest in multifamily. And you know, it's apartment style of accommodation. It's always popular. Young working people, whether the econ economy is good or bad, People need housing, and this, um, like apartment type complexes, are always popular. So that's what we offer as well. Teresa, can you tell me about what is the difference between the income um, products and the growth products? Okay, good. An income product is a product which is an existing building that's already generating income. That's why it's called income. The income is generated from the tenants that are already in place. So you don't have to find them. They're already there. We've researched the, the, the lease agreements that are in place. So we're happy. They're solid. The tenants can pay the rent. The rent is reasonable, etc. So you will get your returns quarterly that's genera generated from the rental that the tenants are paying. That's an income opportunity. Okay. A growth opportunity is 
slightly higher risk because you are dealing with development risk, with a developer, and of course there's more risk. So if you feel you can take more risk, it's, it's an opportunity where you can involve in. The average person will never in his life get to develop property. <laughs> it's too expensive, it takes years, research, money, that's very specialized. So it's, it's out of the picture for the average guy. But now on the Wealth Migrate platform, you can get involved alongside the developer. You share in his risks, but you're also going to share in his profits upon the completion of the building. So that's the a typical zero to one opportunity where you can invest a thousand rand, your money stays in there, you don't get any um, returns during the construction period, but once construction has been completed and the developer gets paid, you share in his profits and then you get back the money you put in plus the profits. That's a growth opportunity. So typically what type of returns are we looking at um, historically um, with our income and with our growth products? Okay, so um, historically we're now onto Medical 9. So we've done not every medical. We had one, two, three, and then maybe six and seven. The reason being that five, we started the investigations, then we, s we discovered something that we didn't like and we let that project go. So we moved on to six. So I think we've done seven medical opportunities. The yearly income varies between around 8% and 11%. It's project specific. So every year t in quarterly uh, in quarterly payments, uh, owners or shareholders have gotten between 8 and 11%. Um, we haven't sold one yet, so we don't know what capital growth um, is going to come out of it, but that's what they've been delivering so far. On zero to one, which is the development opportunity, the brochure says, you will get a 39,3% return, which is what the developer aims to make from the project. So the important thing here also is that you don't ever invest with Wealth Migrate. Wealth Migrate is not an investment company. We are a platform that enables you to invest through different product opportunities which we create based on um, the relationship and the agreement that we have with the property partner and then on the other side bringing the investor. So we're, we're, we're a platform that facilitates that process. Why is it so important uh, that we do our due diligence on the property partner? Because, uh, well, let's, let's first of all start off with um, a, a partner. What's a partner? That's a expert and Wealth Migrate insists that our partners have at least 15 years of proven track record in the area that they specialize. For example, medical real estate. They need to have been involved and successful in that area for at least 15 years before we will use them as a partner. So we vet them, we go into the, their track record, we check them out, we see that they don't have scandals, owe people money, have been bankrupt, et cetera, et cetera. Then we say, okay, we've investigated you, we're happy, you can deliver, you're our partner. And then we will expose our partner's products or opportunities to our client base. Wealth Migrate never touches your money. So that is, uh, that's where people have lost a lot of money in real estate in the past. They've given money directly to developers who never brought the development that they promised. They ran off with people's deposits, et cetera, et cetera. So in our case, we make use of a uh, auditing firm's trust account, so we don't touch your money. Whether Wealth Migrate lives or dies, you still have your investment in a specific project. You didn't give the money to us. And um, can you tell me about how we actually operate in a secure environment? So, um, you know, you, you invest in the product, and once that product is funded, can you explain how that goes and gets listed onto a secure stock exchange? Okay, well, we need to go a bit back and say, how did Wealth Migrate get to this concept? What happened? 
We started out as IPS many years ago, and once you've bought, for example, your first South African property as an investor, and you've experienced the, the, the power of leveraging by getting a mortgage, uh, the income, the escalation in the value of the property, you know that this is a really solid type of investment. But you can only go so far with it. You can only do so many, most people. You, after a while, after the second, third property, the bank starts saying, no, you're overexposed, we're not going to give you money anymore, etc. And it became more and more difficult as the, years, as the years went on, and especially after the global financial crisis. So Wealth Migrate also s always said that you should never have all your eggs in one basket. And believe it or not, everybody in every country feels the same. The Chinese say, we don't trust our government, we want our money offshore. The Americans feel the same, the Australians, the U people in the UK, everybody wants to diversify. Everybody feels, I don't want all my eggs in one basket, because things can happen and then you <laughs> end up losing everything. And it has, people have lost a lot of money in real estate investment. So at the start, we brought South Africans mainly the opportunity to buy residential real estate in Australia, the UK, America. And um, it all went very well. You need a lot of money to get involved. You can get mortgages even. We could get our clients mortgages in Australia, but you needed to invest like a million rand and more, and then you were still stuck with a mortgage of 80%. And if you buy in Australia, you have to file a tax return in Australia. You need lawyers, you need property managers, you need to do maintenance on your property. And if the property is empty, you lose all of your income and then you still have to have the, mo the lawn mowed and the maintenance done. Then you think, <laughs> it's time I get myself a few pounds. And then you buy a property in the UK. And then you discover, well, 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 if I want to buy a property in the UK, I actually need an offshore trust. And then off you run, you open up an offshore trust at huge costs, and now you have this structure. It's costing you money to maintain. You buy the apartment in the UK, you have to file tax returns. You have to have a bank account. You have to have a lawyer. You have to have an auditor. You have to have a property manager, etc., etc. Then you think, oh, I need a few dollars. I'm going to buy one of these houses in America. Yeah, but you need an LLC. Oh, Gosh, what does it cost to have an LLC? Lots of money. Two and a half thousand dollars to maintain it every year. Property managers, bank accounts, tax returns that you have to file, lawyers. It becomes a logistic nightmare. And then the GFC happened and sort of crowdfunding started surfacing. But crowdfunding is a bit dangerous because it's not regulated. So you can end up Getting involved in a project, lose your money, it's not regulated, you're not protected. There you sit again. You thought it was a good idea, but you lose your money. So Wealth Migrate said, we need to bring this into the regulated environment. And how do we do that? So what we do is we find the opportunity that once it's fully funded, it's uh, it's put into a company, a special purpose vehicle. That company that owns that single property, like Medical 9, gets listed on the stock exchange, the Tropics, which has its own securities, rules, things you have to adhere to. You just don't put something on the stock exchange. It needs to be a solid product. So that company that owns that single asset it's listed in the stock exchange, and then you buy a share in a company that owns 100% of a single asset, not a basket, Medical 9, that building. So you can buy a share in that building. You have a share certificate. You're protected by the stock exchange. And again, whether Wealth Migrate is there or not, you own a share in that asset. Thank you. So, um, Teresa, how do you get started? I mean, what's the first step? Register onto yep. wealthmigrate.com? Yeah, you need, to, you need to complete your profile, which is a FICA process or a KYC process. 
you're buying financial products. So you need, we can't be, be um, seen to be involved in money laundering. So you need to prove that you are the person that's buying. In this case here, you need your ID, address, banking details, then you, you complete your profile on the platform. And after that, you go and click on the Invest Now button. <laughs> so, Cisco, is there anything that we've missed out of that process? Please stand up, Cisco. So, Cisco um, really manages the client services and helps you through the process of putting on, um, you know, going onto the secure site, registering, um, registering on there, and doing your KYC. Is there anything that you can you can add to the process to make it simpler? Sure. Um, basically, you just need two documents uh, when you invest through your, your personal capacity. You need a certified passport, and if you don't have a passport, certified ID, you simply scan it in and upload it to the platform. And then we just need to see your physical address. You need to prove your physical address. And the best way to do that is to upload your bank statement because it's generally addressed to you and it has your physical address on it. Alternatively, uh, utility bill. Uh, if you don't own your own property, full lease agreement. So it's as simple as that. Um, for the high net worth clients that might um, own an offshore trust or an offshore company, you will obviously have to upload your documents for your company, and but that's where I will directly get in touch with you and just guide you through that. But generally, um, for, the f for the youngsters, it's simple. You, you register, it's just with your name, your surname, your telephone number, your mobile number, and your email address. Then you're on the platform, you go to my profile, and you complete your profile, where it will ask your personal details, your physical address, and you upload those two documents. Just be aware, it will ask you just to tick that it's certified. Make sure that it's certified before you upload it. You can go to the police station to do that or go to the post office here in South Africa. Alternatively, if you have an old one that you've used in the past, you're welcome to use that too. As simple as that. Thank and you. How did I um, get proof of address? Yeah. I got married in ancient times. So the house, everything, <laughs> city council account, everything is my husband's name. So every time I need a letter, she cohabits with me. So I thought this is finished. Yeah. I went into Telcom, I took out the cheapest mobile contract I could find, 30 rand a month at the time, with the physical address on there, Mulberry Street, 509, Moraleta Bar, Pretoria, that gets sent to me every month, and I've got proof of address now. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Siska. Denise, if I can just add, um, I think l many of you have children and you would like to start an investment portfolio mm -hmm. for your minors. Um, the only thing that I can just add here is that we have a minor form. So the, the parent or the legal guardian will complete that form so it will have your details and your child's details and your child's bank account details. Okay, mm -hmm. So you obviously have to open up a bank account for your child. And I think we all do that already anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then the guardian will be what we call know your client, KYC. So the guardian will need to, together with that form that you complete, just need to um, scan in the identity, certified copy of ID or passport, and then proof of your address. Um, but the only other thing that, uh, that you would need is, is a certified copy of the unabridged um, birth certificate. Okay, because we obviously need to see who are the parents and the legal guardians. Okay, so it, it's very simple. Um, but the two things that you need is bank account for your child, and the child needs to have a, a valid email address, and that you can go open up on Gmail. It's not difficult. Thank you. Well, it's absolutely profound if you think of it. You can invest across currencies, across borders, in commercial real estate opportunities. You would never have ac had access to that before. It's so simple. You can do it. And what's more, you can hold those currencies in your wallet. So you can have pound income, Australian dollar, American dollar income. It's sitting in your wallet. You can reinvest your returns. Can you just think how, what a turbo boost that is to your investments to reinvest your returns? So um, my son is 30 years old. He's a, a mechanical engineer. He works in Worcester for a big, big company there. 
And we had this discussion a few months ago. He's 30. He cannot afford to buy a property because the deposit, the properties are too expensive. It's almost impossible to save up for the deposit because by this time next year, the property prices will have gone up again. And he has started investing in, in, in Wealth Migrate. So he owns shares in a medical building in America and he doesn't have real estate in South Africa. And he's getting dollar returns. So yes, he's, I mean, he's saved from when he worked. He lived in communes until before he got married earlier this year. He lived in communes. He saved. And he's invested in, in medical real estate. So at least he's investing in real estate, even though he can't afford to buy a house in South Africa. Okay, so I'm going to open up to questions now because I think there's individual kind of questions. I'm not going to continue with, you know, the frequently asked questions, but please, um, who has any questions that need to be Can clarified? Can you see us one at the back? Thanks. Sorry, I just was wondering if you get your return paid out, be it nationally or internationally, how are these being taxed in South Africa? You would declare on your tax return foreign dividends, and so you'll pay dividend tax on that, and that's a set amount, uh, irrespective of what your tax bracket is. Dividend tax, I think, at the moment is 20%. So you just declare dividends on your tax return. But of course, if you re if you re we're not investment consultants, and I'm not a tax expert, not by a long way, but there is something that you can reinvest dividends, and pay deferred tax, but please talk to your um, tax advisor. Um, hi. Um, is Wealth Migrate uh, registered with the FSB and what's your FSP number? Oh, we're not registered with them and that's not for a lack of trying. So we have done everything we can. We've jumped over every hoop. We've done so many presentations to them. But I think the short and the long is they don't know what to do with us because they say, you're real estate. So um, we're always on the verge of getting our FSB number, but they never come to the fore and actually give it to us. But it's not for a lack of trying. And it's not, it's not because we're not adhering to every, <laughs> to every rule or whatever. We are, but the, the re it's from their side, not from ours. Is, it, is there someone that I can speak to at Wealth Migrate? Because obviously as an investor, you have the protection if there's regulation and that's where the FSB comes in in South Africa. Of course. So the fact that you're not registered, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing or you're doing anything wrong, but where is the protection in terms of the investor if there's no regulation for your platform? Marielle wants to answer that. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, the way I, the way I understand it is that we've aligned ourselves with partners that, that are registered that are registered with FSB and we use their license. Yes. Okay. Yes. But we are still trying to get our own. Yeah. Can I? Um, can I in invest money from here? So, for instance, in um, I've invested it in an Australian property, um, it gave a good return. Then I moved it to America, and I decided that I want to go and do something in America, go and study in America. Can that money be paid out there so that I can afford to pay for the studies that I want to do here? Sure, some of our investors, my clients, in fact, are supporting their children in America who are studying there from their proceeds or from their returns on the investments they, they bought through Wealth Migrate. But they, uh, they, their son is living there. He's, um, he's taking part in motocross racing. So they support him there. They have bank accounts there. And they, they invest through another vehicle for that very reason. But once you, si you, you, know, <laughs> you sign up with your, your local bank account details because I need those, those need to match. Um, how are they going to, it's a tax question. I, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, <or> cryptocurrency. <laughs> cryptocurrency. Yeah. There's still Reserve Bank, you know, regulations, etc. Yeah. So I mean, we we definitely not tax consultants, um, and though that those kind of questions you would need to speak to your tax advisor on. Um, obviously, wherever the money from a regulatory perspective, wherever whichever bank account the money came from, the money needs to go back into that same bank account. Yeah, if you want to use it. Otherwise if you're you wanting to yeah. use it. I, otherwise, you can keep it in your wallet, your trading account, which is a Barclays account in the Seychelles, which is why you can have several currencies in your wallet. Um, just from a business perspective, sorry, here I am. Um, I've been working for IFAs for the past six years, various IFAs. Is Wealth Migrate and the products Wealth Migrate offers, is it something as an IFA that we can market to our clients or is it, per, is it only d individual on your website? How does that work? No, so I mean we, we, we run an affiliate program, channel partner program and we, you know, we're talking to, to wealth partners or rather wealth managers in terms of do they want to offer our products as an alternative you know, um, as a class for them, so we're in those kind of discussions. Um, but as a as an investor yourself, you can go directly onto Wealth Migrate and invest. And if you've got an independent uh, financial advisor that wants to offer this because they understand it enough, and most certainly they can. I think we've got Nina's an uh, an IFA, and she's well, not an independent financial advisor, but. Um, she was talking to me along this uh, during the break time as to say, you know, when she becomes an independent advisor, it, it's some, you know, it's an asset class that she can possibly put forward to her clients because it's nothing that she typically holds at the moment in terms of her offering. Does that answer the question? Hi, I've got two questions. One, how many successful developments do you have in South Africa? And the second one is, can you tell us more about zero, uh, what's it, uh, zero to one, yeah, and why we should invest in there? Uh, successful developments in South Africa, our focus has actually always been on offshore real estate because we want to allow people to diversify. So um, we will be bringing, uh, I think there's a, a soon to come medical opportunity in South Africa as well. We don't have it yet, but if you go and look on the platform, it, apparently we have one in the line. We have seven successful running ones in the USA. Zero to one, we felt was a very good way to get our name out in South Africa, and we believe in that developer. He's a very, very good developer. So that's the first one we're doing in South Africa. We haven't got a track record of South African properties, no. So zero to one is still open for investment. So if you want to give it a try in South Africa, the minimum investment is a thousand rand. Mm -hmm. You just need to register, upload all your K, um, KYC documentation, and you can try it and use the, um, you know, use the hundred rand voucher that we've given you towards that first investment. But that is the only South African investment that we've got on on the platform at the moment. Oh, you I look, most of us. <laughs> We are completely exposed to South African investment. You own a house. You've maybe bought other investment properties. So that's the reason we think you should diversify a bit. And that's why we're bringing you offshore opportunities mostly. If you're a beginner investor and you want to get involved in South Africa, zero to one is as good as it gets. Like I said, it's a growth opportunity. So your money will stay in there during the construction phase and then you will share in the developer's uh, returns, profits. I think we've got time for two more questions we have here. Jana, it's one over here. So with the zero to one investment, what instrument are you actually getting? Are you getting a share? Are you getting a unit in a trust? Are you getting, and is it listed? So um, most people in a financial institution, if you work for them, you need to ask for approval in terms of personal account trading. So when I go to work on Monday, I need to tell my boss what is it that I'm going to be investing in? What is this financial instrument I will be getting with my investment? So is it a share? Is mm. it listed? Where is it listed? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a share. You're buying a Just share, and you get a share certificate, and it's listed on the Tropex in the s in the Seychelles. On the so effectively, once let's talk about zero to one. So let's say we we funded that, um, and that gets listed on the Tropex as a special purpose vehicle. So effectively, think of it as a initial public offering. It's you and you own a share in the total FWJK zero to one Tropics. investment that is listed on the Tropics. Mm. As not an individual apartment, you can imagine with a thousand grand. <laughs> yeah. So you might, like, um, uh, we always laugh at Scott because he would say, um, this is a medical building. And he says, okay, although I only own a piece of the front door of the medical building, I still own a piece of that medical building. <laughs> yes. Uh, hi, Teresa. I hi. have two questions. The first is in terms of uh, getting started with our initial payment. So once you've registered... Uh, where does the uh, first, um, I think it's the $1,000 come in, in terms of having to pay forward? And then what are the risks involved uh, in getting involved with Wealth Migrate? <laughs> There's always in any investment a risk. There's no, absolutely no guarantees. But every humanly possible research and due diligence has been done on the partner and the in development itself. So we've done what we could. Um, thereafter, there is always a risk. Things happen. Um, you've seen weather patterns happening, political changes, etc. So that we can't tell you whether how it's going to affect any investment. So do you want to know when you make the payment? You said about the $1,000. Yes, yeah. <coughs> so if it's you're investing in America, the minimum investment is $1,000. So once you've done, uploaded your, uh, completed your profile, you will click on the Invest Now button, and then the, the system will take you through the process. You'll sign the documentation online. Of, on f you still need to go to your Forex department and transfer your money out of South Africa to the banking details it's generated on the system during the process and then you come back and you upload the proof of payment and then you complete your investment and you have a set of electronic documents and you also get a share certificate well it's written to the blockchain yes <laughs> yeah. so okay so guys unfortunately we d we don't have time for any more questions sorry jenny um, and I know Jenny's excited to give our thousand dollar prize away. That's why she's jumping up and down. Huh? So, um, Teresa, thank you. Teresa's going to be here. Please um, <laughs> go and chat to her. Thank you, Teresa, for answering a lot of those questions. Um, but yeah, please, if you've got some more, um, I just want to do very quickly is all the wealth migrate woman. I know we all wealth migrate women now, but the wealth migrate women that work at wealth migrate, please stand up. <laughs> so, so ladies, please, um, if any of you have questions, just look around the room and please go and grab them during lunchtime and. Um, let them help you on the journey. But I'm really asking that you please engage with us. We want you part of this community. You see what we're all about in terms of the work that we're doing with, with women and wealth. Um, it's this is just the beginning. Uh, you know, register onto our, onto our platform so we can start communicating with you, sending you through those education journeys, inviting you to our webinars, inviting you to our next events so you can start to educate yourself around all of this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah.